What we're doing here is we're building a tokamak that is capable of holding uh, a plasma that's burning at 100 million degrees uh, and keeping it away from the walls of the machine. And the way that we do that is with a magnet. So we, we wind a massive, massive electromagnet that is capable of confining and manipulating the plasma. And to do that you need an extremely strong magnet. And to make an extremely strong magnet in an energy efficient manner you need superconductors. So this is an experiment you can do to demonstrate the action of flux pinning in superconductors which involves uh, magnetic levitation of a permanent magnet on top of a superconductor. What we have here is a bulk piece of superconductor grown by the University of Cambridge which is the same material as that used in the HTS tapes that we're going to build our tokamak out of. So over the last 10 years or so, there's been a tremendous development in turning this material into a material that can be deposited on tapes in a very, very thin layer, but still able to carry enormously high currents. And that's the technology that we're essentially trying to exploit here in building a massive magnet for a tokamak. So what I'm going to do now is pour liquid nitrogen over the experiment in order to cool the superconductor below its transition temperature. This will continue to bubble away now until the superconductor has reached the same temperature as the nitrogen bath, which is 77 Kelvin. So now that the superconductor has been cooled below its transition temperature, the magnetic field inside the superconductor has been pinned extremely strongly by the superconductor itself. So I can now remove the spacing material and the permanent magnet will remain levitated in its current position. It's cool, isn't it? So what you're seeing now is the permanent magnet remaining in the same position that it was when we first cooled down the superconductor. So the superconductor has become magnetized by the presence of this permanent magnet. And as long as the superconductor now stays cold, this permanent magnet will stay there. And also because the permanent magnet is circular, its magnetic field doesn't change when we spin it around. So we can actually spin it on its axis and it will continue to spin for as long as the superconductor remains cold until air resistance eventually slows it down. So you can really see how strong the flux pinning is here. When I try and press it, the superconductor works really hard to keep this in exactly the same position that it was when it first cooled down. Uh, so another neat trick you can do is actually to remove the magnet altogether and we remember that the, the super currents that are still, are still going to be flowing in this material, because it's superconducting, there's nothing to stop them, slow them down, make them die away. And so when I put the permanent magnet back, it goes exactly back to where it was before.